Hello, Pastor Don here on a Monday morning, June the 14th, here obviously in the sanctuary of Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Wildwood, the Villages. Welcome to this morning's installment of our scripture reading and brief time of prayer, a time to get ourselves off on the right foot for the week. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope that you were able to uh, find worship to be satisfying either in person, hopefully here at Rock of Ages, or somewhere. If you are looking for a church home and are in the vicinity of uh, Wildwood, we would welcome you here. We are currently uh, maskless and uh, have released all protocols on social distancing. Uh, we're basically wide open. So we look forward to seeing you here at Rock of Ages one day soon. Today, I want to deal with a topic that um, has been fresh on our minds recently. Uh, five years ago, uh, this past weekend, uh, was a horrible tragedy that took place at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, at which 49 innocent people were gunned down and the shooter himself was killed, making a total of 50. The hatred that drove this act is beyond comprehension. The pain that it has caused so many people for so long and will continue to be painful is a pain that not only they bear, but we bear as a society. We, as fellow human beings, should recognize first and foremost that we are all created in God's image and we are loved unconditionally. Unconditionally means it doesn't matter about our race, sexual identity, politics, gender, anything. We are created equally and in God's image, loved unconditionally. And so the panacea, the healing practice that we can engage in is love and hope. The stain of pulse will be with us forever. And the hatred that underlies the act continues to fester around us and will continue to be part of the human condition. But we as Christians, we as followers of Christ, must counter that hatred with love and with hope. Today, I want to read to you from 1 Peter in the first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that through perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word hope appears about 187 times, as I uh, am able to determine throughout Scripture. And hope is that four-letter word that we cling to as Christians. It is hope of an eternal life, free from hatred, free from pain, free from all of the weaknesses of our human condition. And so we cling to that hope. We cling to the promise of a pain-free eternity with Jesus Christ. 
And so as we contemplate the evils of this world, including the senseless murder of 49 people at Pulse nightclub, the pain that is spawned by those kinds of acts and a continuing litany of them uh, that does not ever seem to stop. Uh, we have lost count of the numbers of senseless shootings that have occurred. They continue almost daily. But rather than sink into despair, I think we need to do what we have available to us to do, the powerful uh, remedy of prayer and clinging to the hope that is, in fact, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Gracious God, as we remember the tragic act at the Pulse nightclub five years ago, the hatred that spawned that act, and the almost daily shootings that occur out of hatred and fear or whatever other motivation, we feel hopeless oftentimes. But Lord, remind us that we possess a powerful antidote, and that is clinging to the hope of the resurrection and the accessibility of you through prayer. And so, Lord, we come to you today asking that you would renew our hope, strengthen our resolve that we can indeed collectively as a society find a better, better way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope your day gets off to a, a good start and your week is blessed. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow on Tuesday. Until then, God bless.